aerodynamic drag is a big deal in the Cup. So how much is this worth on an America's Cup race course? At the speeds that a modern Cup boat is travelling, a helmet could cost four seconds a race. That's around three boat lengths. And that's why the latest AC75 to emerge looks like this. Magic have just launched their new boat and it's another fascinating interpretation of the class rule and very different to the four others that have been launched. Because while they all know how important low drag is, Patriot takes it to another level. The first thing you notice is how clean her lines are above and below the waterline. And while her angular graphics suggest otherwise, the overall shape is very similar to her previous sister ship which was as sharp as a bar of soap. To achieve low drag, they've gone for the lowest freeboard they can achieve, but there are practical limits. First, there's a minimum volume requirement in the rules. Then there's the practical aspect of creating enough space for the crew to do their thing. And this is where it gets very interesting. Working from the stern, the cyclors are on recumbent bikes and they face aft. This means that they're both lower in the boat and the right way around to allow the shear line to slope away quickly as it flows aft. The compromise is that they'll produce slightly less power than if they're on normal bikes. Anyone who's ridden one at the gym will be able to imagine that. But they'll also know that these bikes are more comfortable and perhaps in the context of a bucking cut boat, more secure too. The helmsman and trimmer sit side by side in the boat rather than fore and aft. This helps to concentrate the crew amidships which is better for balance and to reduce the pitching moment and it also means that the height of the top sides can be kept to a minimum. The downside is that sitting side by side means that there might be a bit more drag and when a helmet counts for four seconds a race that might be an issue. Under the water, this is a boat with a deep, long skeg, but as with the Italians, it tapers out towards the stern. I wonder if this is to do with the balance between creating an end plate effect and allowing good manoeuvrability at speed. Imagine the boat slowing down as you go into a manoeuvre and lowering itself towards the water surface. Surely when the skeg re-immerses, it'll hinder the stern swinging round. A longer skeg would try and keep the boat going in a straight line. Then, when you look at the rudder, there's another hint. Their blade tapers aggressively from a long cord at the top to a skinny one lower down. Again, could this be to do with manoeuvrability? When the boat's flying at speed, you need a very slender low drag foil. All the teams have gone for this. But slow the boat down, and as the hull lowers towards the water, you get more grip with the rudder that's less inclined to stall out. So the overall approach of American Magic's Patriot seems to be low drag and high manoeuvrability. Patriot was first wheeled out a few days ago, but that was it. A quick airing and a glimpse of the dark blue cut boat before she was wheeled back inside. But now she's been christened, launched and sailed for the first time, all in one day. Interestingly, they're only the second team so far to have achieved this. And just as with the Kiwis, this will mean a lot to them. The interview with their skipper Terry Hutchinson hints at this. You'll also hear how pleased he is that they've achieved their schedule and listen out for his response to the suggestion that they're late launching. Plus, listen to what he has to say about the days in the AC40 versus days in the AC75. It's very interesting stuff. Here he is. As far as first days go, um, inside uh, the American Magic program, really, this was probably our best first day. You know, in uh, our first boat with Defiant, we had a couple issues on the very first day, even though it was a good first day there, but we broke a lot of things. Um, our first day with the previous Patriot, uh, we had a great sail that ended in a big stuff and back to the dock with a lot of broken bits. And here, um, the team really 
executed on the day. You know, we put the boat in the water, christened her, and uh, thank you, Commodore Harrington, uh, for that. And went out and you know methodically worked through the systems checks, and and then went for a good light air sail. So you just sailed one upwind. Was that all you were aiming for today? Yeah, I mean we would have stayed out, but we got weather coming. The weatherman was skedaddling us in because there's, apparently there's a risk of thunderstorms here later on in the day. And so, you know, there's you know it's day one, and there's there'll be a lot to do in the shed tonight. And so, you know, I'm certain the sailors, everybody wanted to keep going, but probably best that uh, the weatherman called it for us. Yeah, the plan from here on out is we'll close out this week um, with some sailing and you know we got a couple more days of sea trialing and a couple more days of just working through the systems and you know but I would suspect very quickly we'll um, be with race marks out there and you know we started a great pattern of development with the AC40s and how we worked the boats up there and you know each day how we got ready to go racing in those and so I think we're going to follow a pretty similar pattern there and and uh, learn to develop the boat and and figure out how we can extract performance. We know you like to get the most sailing days of any team. Will you still aim for that with Patriot? Well, I, you know, if you weren't a professional sailing team, maybe it would be a mistake. But I guess since we are, we should probably keep focused on the water and keep developing. And some of the other teams are already in double-digit sailing days. Are you in a fight against time right now, or are you just where you want to be? No, I mean, yeah, I don't really contemplate that because we executed our schedule. You know, I was really excited by, and I think the entire team was excited by the AC40 racing that we did. You know, we spent three months of in-house racing, and we got over 100 races and 100 starts against each other, and that was quality uh, team building, quality development time. And so, you know, we're executing our plan. Uh, if the others get a couple more days in, I would happily trade the racing of April for four or five or nine extra days inside of an AC75. Has your late launch been uh, because of anything specific, to any specific benefit? Uh, it's not late. Uh, and we noticed you also had some recumbent cyclists in the back of the boat. Yeah. Uh, is this going to be that, it's going to stay this way? I guess time will tell. <laughs>